Tell you another story about Jesus. Yes, yes, we are here. Come on, let's start. Okay, one fine day, Jesus went to the mountains to pray to God. He went alone and did not take his disciples along with him. His disciples set sail on a boat, and by evening, the boat was far away from land. Suddenly, there came a huge storm. Jesus' disciples tried really hard to sail against the high waves and the strong winds. The sea kept raging. And after a while, his disciples were very tired and could not row any longer. They were beginning to despair. When at dawn, Jesus came to them, walking on the sea. At first, the disciples were really afraid, seeing a man walk on the sea. They thought it was a ghost. But then Jesus called out to them and said, Don't be afraid. It is me who is walking on the water. His disciples rejoiced at the sight. Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, said, I want to walk on the water too. Jesus called Peter to him and he started walking on the water. Peter felt the wind against him and began to sink. He cried for help, and Jesus caught him by his hand. Jesus was disappointed to see that Peter had such little faith in God. By then, the storm had stopped and the wind stopped blowing. Jesus, walking on the sea, proved to his disciples once again the fact that Jesus was truly the Son of God. Wow! Jesus walked on water? How cool is that? Now, it's time for a question. Today, the question is for Gumbo. So Gumbo, tell me, what did the disciples think when Jesus came walking on the sea? They thought he was a ghost. You are absolutely correct. Good boy. Hello, my name is Tubby. I live here in this wonderful library and I love to eat books. I live here with my friends Gumbo and Freckles. Gumbo, Freckles, come out, come out, wherever you are. Over there, on that great book, is Grand Old Holy. She is really old and wise and tells us wonderful stories when she is awake, that is. Oh, and we love to sing. Jesus, so holy. I wasn't sleeping. I was thinking about which story to tell you today. Today's story 
is about how Jesus fed the crowds. And like always, at the end of the story, I will be asking you one question. John was a priest of the ancient Jewish temple who had baptized Jesus when he was a young boy. Few years had passed since then and Jesus grew up to be a man and he heard that John was killed. So Jesus was sad and went to a secluded place in a boat. His followers followed him on foot around the Sea of Galilee. When Jesus came ashore from the Sea of Galilee, he saw a large crowd waiting for him. The crowd had been waiting for him for a long time and they were hungry. But all that Jesus and his disciples had were five loaves of bread and two fish. That was not enough to feed the large crowd. Jesus' disciples said, Let us send these people back since we do not have enough food for them. Jesus did not want these people to go. He had to do something for these people. So he asked his disciples, Get the loaves of bread and the fish that we already have. The disciples did what Jesus told them to do. Jesus blessed the food and everyone ate their fill. And they went back with 12 baskets of leftovers. Wasn't that a wonderful story? about how Jesus fed a huge crowd with only five loaves of bread and two fish? Did you all like the story? Oh yes, we surely did. So, what is the question for today? How many loaves and fish did Jesus and his disciples have? Isn't this the question? No, today's question is, why did the disciples want to send the people away? Only because they did not have enough food to feed the crowd and they were hungry. Excellent! Now I am hungry. Yay! Sandwiches! Thank you, Holy. I am so, so hungry. Ha <laughs> I am glad. What story are you going to read today? Today's story is Jesus Heals a Blind Man. Awesome! So let's not waste any more time. Start with the story, Holy! Jesus cared for those who were hurt, sick or injured and had a lot of love for them. He healed them and soon his reputation as a healer spread and people from different places brought their loved ones to be healed by Jesus. Sometimes, Jesus would not only heal people, but also raise them from the dead. These miracles proved God's immense power. One day, Jesus and his disciples were walking when they saw a blind man. The man was born blind, and he was unable to see since birth. His disciples looked at the man and asked Jesus, Master, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents? He wasn't born blind because of sin at all. Jesus answered, It was so that God's power could be seen in him. All of us need to carry out God's work while we are here because the time is short. While I am here in this world, I am the light of the world. Jesus then bent down and spit into the dirt. He made mud and spread it over the blind man's eyes. Then he said, Go and wash off the mud in the pool of Siloam. The man did what Jesus asked him to do. And when he came back, he could see. The people who knew him were shocked. They kept asking one another in wonder, Is this the man who had been blind his whole life? How can he see now? Some even thought he must be a different man, but he looked exactly like the man they had always known. The man kept telling everyone, It's me! It's really me! Who healed you? Why can you see now? They asked. He explained to them what Jesus did with the mud on his eyes, and how he could see 
after washing it off in the water of the pool of Siloam. The people looked for Jesus everywhere, but the man did not know where he went. So they took the man to the religious leaders. Incidentally, Jesus had healed the man on Sabbath day, which the religious leaders did not approve of. When the leaders asked the man about what had happened, the man explained the entire incident once again. To this, the leaders said, Jesus cannot be a man of God. Then he wouldn't be doing work on the Sabbath. But the others kept wondering if Jesus was an ordinary man, how could he do such a miracle? The leaders disagreed amongst themselves. So they asked the man once again, and the man once again told him the story. Then they asked him who he thought Jesus was. I guess he is a prophet. The man answered. The religious leaders did not want to believe that Jesus had performed any miracle. So they went to talk to the man's parents. Was your son always blind? If so, how can he see now? They asked. Yes, he was born blind. They answered. We do not know why and how he can see now. We do not know who healed him. He is an adult man and can speak for himself. So talk to him about it. They were afraid that the religious leaders would throw them out of the temple if they even hinted that Jesus might be a messiah. So the religious leaders went back to the man and asked him the same questions. Once again, he answered the same. Then he asked, Why are you asking me the same question? Do you want to become Jesus' disciples too? This made the leaders extremely angry. We know that God spoke to Moses and we follow his teachings. We don't know where this Jesus came from. Well, the man said, No one has ever been able to open the eyes of a blind man. And God doesn't do what sinners tell him to do. So he must be from God. This angered the leaders. They threw the man out of the temple. The sandwiches were delicious. Did you even hear the story? Of course I did. Ask me anything and I'll be able to answer. Well, today's question is, where did Jesus send the blind man to wash his eyes? Jesus asked the man to wash his eyes in the waters of the pool of Siloam. Mmm! Well done, Gumbo! To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hello, kids! And we are back with a new story from the Bible. Say hello to your friends Tubby, Gumbo and Freckles. Hello! What is today's story about, Holly? Well, today's story is about how Jesus miraculously healed ten men who were suffering from a deadly disease. Well, that sounds interesting. Jesus was walking with his disciples to Jerusalem, and like always, a large crowd of people were following him. Just as they were crossing the border between Galilee and Samaria, Jesus saw a group of men standing a little distance away. They were all suffering from the contagious disease of leprosy. So, the law had stated that when a person had this disease, he had to leave his home and live in a leper colony. This group of ten men that Jesus noticed were all suffering from leprosy. The moment they saw Jesus, they began shouting to him, Please! Have mercy on us! Jesus very calmly told them to go and show themselves to the priests. The men did not understand why Jesus asked them to do that, but they all took off running towards the temple. As they ran, their bodies were miraculously and completely healed of leprosy. 
one of the ten men stopped immediately when he realized that he was healed. He turned around and came back to Jesus. He fell down to his knees and said, Praise God, I'm healed. He put his face right down on the ground and just kept thanking Jesus for healing him. And this particular man was a Samaritan, not even a Jew. Jesus was thankful for the man's gratitude, but he said, Didn't I heal all ten men? Where are the rest? Why is it just you who return to thank me? Where are the nine Jewish men? Jesus then told the man to get up and go home. It is his faith in God that cured him. Nice! Jesus did such wonderful miracles. I love these kind of stories. Me too. What is today's question, Holy? Today's question is, where did Jesus notice the ten men who were suffering from leprosy? Um, Jerusalem? No, silly. Jesus saw these ten men at the border between Galilee and Samaria in a leper colony. Wonderful answer, Tubby. Very well done. Didn't you enjoy the story? My friends and I surely did. So, come back soon and keep watching. Hello, kids. We are back again to tell you a new story from the Bible. The story which you are going to tell us today, what is it about? I am going to tell you a very exciting story. It is called, Jesus Calms the Storm. Wow! That must be interesting. Let's not waste any more time, Holy. Go on with the story. Jesus did everything and performed miracles to point people to God. He wanted people to know God, love Him, trust Him, and obey Him. He did miraculous things to show people God's amazing powers, which no normal human being could do. The people who saw these miracles happening truly believed that Jesus was the Son of God and the Messiah. Wherever Jesus went, a large crowd of people always followed him. He spent his days teaching, healing, talking with them, and got very little rest. One day, after teaching all day, in the evening, he said to his disciples, Come, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So Jesus, along with his disciples, got onto one boat, while some of the people in the crowd got into other boats and followed them. Jesus went to the back of the boat and lay down. He was very tired, and so he fell asleep. When the boat was in the middle of the lake, a terrible storm blew in. The wind blew the boat around, tossing and turning it, and the waves crashed against it. The disciples were terrified. They thought they would die. They frantically went to Jesus and said, Teacher, help, help us. us. We're going to drown. Jesus very calmly got up and looked at the waves and said, be still. Immediately, the wind stopped blowing and the waves calmed down. Everything was quiet. Jesus then turned to his disciples and asked, Why were you so afraid? Don't you have faith in me? All of his disciples were amazed to see Jesus' powers. They wondered amongst themselves as to who was this great man that even the wind and the waves obeyed him. That was indeed a very exciting story, Holy. Jesus had such amazing powers to even control the wind and the waves. Oh yes, I love stories like these. Holy, what question are you going to ask us today? 
I was thinking of not asking you any questions. I am just glad that you paid attention and you liked the story. What? No question? Yay! We love all the stories that you tell us, Holy. Thank you. You are most welcome, dear. Hi, my name is Tubby. I live here in this wonderful library and I love to eat books. I live here with my friends Gumbo and Freckles. Over there on that great book is Holy. She is really old and wise and tells us wonderful stories when she is awake, that is. Oh, and we love to sing. Kids, I was just having such a funny dream about the three of you. Awesome! Was I like Superman? That's my favorite dream. Oh no, Tubby, you were studying. Freckles was eating and Gumbo was staring at a mirror. Hey, that's so unlike us. <laughs> <laughs> now, Holy, will you tell us a story from the Bible, please? Yes, I will, but you have to pay attention. <laughs> Of course we will. All right. This story is about the marriage feast. Once there was a marriage feast at Cana where Jesus and Mary were invited. It was a happy feast, but unfortunately, soon they were short of wine. Now, if the wine got over before the feast ended, there would be nothing for the guests to drink and the bridegroom and his family would be shamed. Mary saw that and was worried. She told Jesus to help. Jesus said, The time hasn't come for me to do God's work. Mary still said, I'm sure you can do something. Jesus saw six large jugs of water, which could hold 30 gallons of water lined by the side of the wall. In those days, the guests had to wash themselves before a meal, and that is why the six jugs of water were kept. Jesus told the waiter to fill the jugs till the top. After the waiter had done so, he told him to take the water and give it to the wine waiter to taste. The waiter did as he was told. The wine waiter tasted the water which had now turned into wine. He said, This wine is very good. The bridegroom must have saved this for the last. Hence, this miracle saved the poor bridegroom from being shamed. Everyone left the feast happy. Wow, what a nice story. I'm sure there must have been a lot of nice food at the feast. <laughs> Tubby, I'm sure there was. Now I will ask a question. What did Jesus turn the water in the jugs into? Yes, I can answer this. He turned it into wine. Very well done, Gumbo. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hello children, my name is Holy and I live here in this wonderful library. My favorite book in the whole wide world is the Bible. Did you know that the Bible is full of wonderful stories? Stories? Did you say stories? Yay! It must be story time! Glad to see you three today. I am awake and ready to tell you a story from the Bible again. That is so great, Holy. We would love to hear one. Good. So today the story I'm going to tell you is about the paralyzed man who walks. A long time ago, four men came to the house where Jesus was teaching his followers. They were carrying their friend on a stretcher. 
the man was paralyzed and could not walk or move his body. The friends believed that Jesus could heal him. But the house was full of people and they didn't know how to get close to Jesus. So they took their friend to the roof of the house and removed a few tiles. They then lowered the stretcher till it rested on the floor right in front of Jesus. Jesus was very happy with their faith in him. He told the paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven, my friend. Some people in the crowd got angry and said, Only God can forgive our sins. Jesus said, Tell me which is easier, to tell this man his sins are forgiven or to ask him to walk. I am the Son of God and I can forgive his sins. I will ask him to get up now. When Jesus said this, the paralyzed man got up and walked away. Everybody was surprised. They all praised God and said, We have never seen anything like this before. Now children, wasn't that a wonderful story? It was indeed. But I will ask a question now. Who did the four friends think could heal their paralyzed friend? Oh, I know this. It is simple. They thought that Jesus could heal him. That is right, Tubby. You paid attention. The whole point is, if you have faith, then miracles can happen. Wow! Okay, children, till next time. to Holy to hear a story from the Bible. Holy, who lives in the Bible, knows millions and millions of stories. Isn't that right, Tubby? Sure is. Come on, Gumbo and Freckles, let's sing a song for Holy. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. It was a lovely song. Thank you. Holy, we want to ask you something. Do you know who is the smartest one? Freckles, me, or Gumbo? I have a simple solution. Whoever answers the question, I ask at the end. The story I'm about to tell you is about the smartest of the three. That sounds fair. All right. Long time ago in Capernaum lived a Roman centurion or army officer who was in charge of 100 Roman soldiers. Once his servant was very ill. The officer had heard about Jesus, so he told some of the Jewish leaders to go and ask Jesus for help to save his servant. As soon as Jesus came to town, the elders went to him and told him about the centurion's request. They said, He is a good man and deserves your help. He built us a place of worship and is kind to our people. Jesus agreed to meet him. But before Jesus reached the officer's house, some of his friends met him with the message from the officer. They said, The officer has requested you not to trouble yourself for him. He said, He isn't good enough for you to enter his house. He has told you to say some kind words from a distance. Your kind words have the power to travel miles. When Jesus heard the message, he smiled. He turned to his followers and said, I haven't found such faith in the whole of Israel. The friends then returned to the officer's house and saw the servant had been healed. Wow! Jesus healed the man from a distance? Yes, he did, Freckles. All you need is to have faith. Now answer the question, whom did the officer want Jesus to heal? We all know! The officer wanted Jesus to heal his servant who was ill. You are that is right, children. All very smart. Thank you, Holy. That makes us all very happy. The Holy Tales Hey guys, my name is Tubby. I live here in this wonderful library and I love to eat books. I live here with my friends Gumbo and Freckles. Hello 
children. I just got up from a nice long nap. Freckles, you look so pretty today. Oh, thank you, Holy. It's my new dress. What? That's new? It looks like everything else you wear. So, would you children like to hear an interesting story from the Bible? That's what we're here for. We can't wait. Okay, I won't keep you waiting anymore. I will tell you a story, but do you know what you have to do after that? Yes, answer the question you ask us. Very good. Now, this story is about the woman who got healed. Wherever Jesus went, there was always a crowd of people around him. Some people wanted to be healed by him, while others asked him to heal their loved ones. One day, there was a woman in the crowd who had been ill for many years and was in a lot of pain. She had given a lot of money to doctors, but they couldn't help her at all. She believed in Jesus and his wonderful healing powers. She wanted to meet him as soon as possible. She thought, if I can just touch his clothes, I know I will be healed. At last, she met Jesus. She was able to touch a part of Jesus' cloak. She knew at once that she had been healed. Suddenly, Jesus stopped and asked, Who touched my cloak? The followers said, There are so many people around you. But Jesus kept looking in the crowd. Finally, the woman who had been healed came out. She fell at his feet, very scared. She told him that she had touched his cloak. Jesus said kindly, My child, it is not my cloak but your faith in me that has healed you. Go in peace and be free of your illness. Awesome! Now, now, here comes the question. Which part of Jesus' clothing did the woman touch and feel she was healed? I know, I know. She touched Jesus' cloak. Isn't that right, Holy? Yes, it is absolutely right, Freckles. Well done. Now let me join you children in your song. Sure, Holy. Hi, my name is Tubby. I live here in this wonderful library and I love to eat books. I live here with my friends Gumbo and Freckles. Gumbo, Freckles, it's story time. Over there, on that great book, is Grand Old Holy. She is really old and wise and tells us wonderful stories when she is awake, that is. children what oh god bless you are you unwell holy i hope you get well soon i am sure you will feel better after you tell us a story that is sweet gumbo of course i will tell you all a story awesome all right kids today's story is about a blind man who sees again the stories of jesus healing people were spreading far and wide one day, Jesus and his followers came to the town of Bethesda. When he was there, some people brought a blind man to him. They told Jesus, Please, put your hand on him and heal him. Jesus held the man's hand and took him away from all the people. Then Jesus slowly closed his eyes, massaged them, and then laid his hands on them. When he was done, he asked the blind man, can you see anything now? The man was very happy. He said, Yes, I can see trees. But you're walking around, so they must be people. Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes again, and he was completely healed. The man was really, really happy. He said joyfully, I can see. Now I can see everything. Jesus told him, Go back home now, my child, and do not tell anyone about this the man went back home happily grateful that he had got his sight back you know kids i actually feel so much better after telling you kids the story i am glad you feel better i told you so yes you did gumbo thank you 
So the question for you three is, who did the people of Bethesda bring to Jesus to heal? I will answer this. They brought to Jesus a blind man to be healed, right? Right to our tubby. Very good. But sadly, I have to go back to sleep. <gasps> To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hi, I am Holy, the oldest and the wisest bookworm of this library. I live in the Bible and I know all the stories in it. Tubby, Gumbo and Freckles are three little bookworms who come to me to listen to new stories every day. wonder where they are today. Tubby, Gumbo, Freckles, where are you? Don't you want to listen to today's story? Of course we want to listen to a story. Tubby was busy eating, so we had to pull him out of a book. My goodness, I ate too much. Now I can't move. Holy, please start with today's story. Just ignore Tubby. Okay, now sit down. Today I will tell you an amazing story about Jesus and a blind beggar. A long time ago, there lived a blind beggar in the town of Jericho. His name was Bartimaeus. One day, Jesus and his followers were visiting the town. As they were leaving, they were crossing the road on which Bartimaeus was begging. Since there was a lot of noise being made by all the people around Jesus, Bartimaeus asked a man about what was happening. The man told him that Jesus and his followers were passing by. Bartimaeus had heard a lot of good things about Jesus and the miracles he performed. So he shouted out loud, Son of David, have pity on this poor blind beggar. He went on shouting again and again till Jesus heard him. People tried to keep him quiet but Jesus told his followers to bring the beggar to him. When Bartimaeus was taken to Jesus, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do? The beggar replied, Have pity on me, son of David. Let me get my eyesight back. Hearing this, Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has saved you. Bartimaeus got his eyesight back and was very happy. And so from that very moment, he became a devout follower of Jesus. But holy, why did the beggar call Jesus the son of David? I thought his father was Joseph. The Jewish people expected the Messiah to be from the family of King David. And for this reason, the Messiah was often called the son of David. Oh, okay. Go ahead. So, for the question, what was the name of the town where Bartimaeus lived? I know this one. He lived in Jericho. Very good, Freckles. Thank you, Holy. I think we should go now and let Holy take the usual nap. Hi, I am Tubby. I live in this library with two of my friends, Gumbo and Freckles. Just about the battle of Jericho. from Holy, the oldest and wisest bookworm of this library. She is so cool, but she loves to sleep. I just hope she's awake today. Come on, let's go. Holy, wake up. It's story time. Yes, do tell us a really exciting story today about Jesus. Oh, all right, all right. Let's start with today's story. But promise me that you will listen to the story very carefully and not be naughty. We promise! A long time ago, there lived a man called Jairus. He was a minister in the house of God. He had a daughter who was really very ill. She was only 12 years old and Jairus was scared 
that his one and only daughter would die. So one day, feeling very helpless, he decided to go to Jesus for help. When Jairus went to Jesus, Jesus was teaching his disciples and his followers. Jairus went up to him and said, Master, my daughter is very ill. You must help her or she will die. Jesus agreed and told Jairus to immediately take him to his house. While they were on their way, some friends of Jairus stopped them to give them the bad news. They said, Your daughter has died. Now Jesus does not need to take the trouble to go to your house. But Jesus did not turn back. Jesus asked him not to worry and have faith in God. When they reached the house, people were already crying. Jesus looked at the girl and said to the crowd that there was no need to cry and that she was just asleep. They did not believe him. Then Jesus held the girl's hand and said softly, Child, it is time to wake up. The spirit returned to the lifeless body of the girl and she immediately opened her eyes. Her family gave her food to eat and Jairus thanked Jesus. Jesus asked Jairus and his wife not to tell anyone about what had taken place. But how did Jesus do that? Silly, have you forgotten that Jesus is the son of God? Oh yes, right, I forgot. So the question for today is, what was the name of the man whose daughter was very ill? Jairus! Very good, Freckles. Now off you go, children. Be good and happy. Bye-bye. Bye, Holly. We shall be back soon. The Holy Tales. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun to shine in the day, the moon and stars to come out at night. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush.